I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Tawny Cypress, who plays yeah. Thaisa on Yellow Jackets. And uh, I'm curious, okay. just what was your perception of who Thaisa was when you were first signing on to the role? And also, I guess, how does that compare to just what we see later on in the season, some of the revelations that we get, some of the darker elements at, towards the end? Um, well, they don't tell me anything. So I was completely in the dark uh, as a fan of, of horror and uh, mystery. Uh, I was intrigued right away and I knew there was something fucked up about this girl. Uh, sorry if I can't curse. But uh, I just knew it uh, from the, from the get go. You could just, you know, she would if 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 there was a creepier character, I don't know uh, who it is. You know, uh, she's got the creepy kid. She's got the whole nine yards. So my first thought uh, about her was one: um, she was a Jersey girl, so that was fun to just sort of embrace who I actually am. Um, grew up at the Jersey Shore, so you know it was very close to home. This character to begin with. Um, but I knew there was going to be something deliciously fun about her and I didn't know what, and I didn't even know any of it. I didn't know she was the lady in the tree until I read it. <laughs> I didn't know she killed the dog until I read it. So like, it's, it was all a revelation to me, you know, going along. And it, I, I, as a fan, I think it's a lot of fun. Certainly. Yes. Um, I mean, it does have so many twists and turns and things mm -hmm. that still haven't even been revealed to us and the audience. I'm sure there are things that haven't even been revealed to you yet. Uh, oh, yeah. No, everything. Pretty much yeah. everything. Well, there you go. Yeah. But <laughs> how much are you sort of adjusting your performance to reflect the new information that you're getting with each script? And I, I, how does that sort of excite you as an actor to be able to be like, oh, now I know this and now I can mm -hmm. change this aspect? So I think um, in television acting, um, there's a lot of, you have to be really uh, fluid uh, with your character. So uh, I approach it as I approach any other uh, television character, which is, you know, I make a history for the character. I know her, um, the, how she would react to something or her core uh, essence of the character. But knowing that I'm gonna get drips and drops of pieces of information along the way, not necessarily gonna change the character the, at the core, but it is going to um, adjust, you know, that, I mean, not, it, it doesn't really adjust my uh, my performance at all, but mm. I, I, I'll say I've never had to eat dirt before. So that's, getting to do stuff like that is a lot of fun. Um, and, and something as an actor at this for over 20 years, I, I've never I've never gotten to do before, so. It's pretty exciting in that regard. Yeah. Well, I'm also just wondering about having a like a whole other storyline where we do get to see Thaisa as a teenager out in the wilderness, you know, making choices, stepping up and being a leader and, yeah. you know, really seeing that foundation. Um, how much does that storyline, even if you're not technically involved in the scenes, how does that help you? Oh my gosh, immensely. I mean, I, I would talk to Jasmine on a weekly basis when we got the scripts and we discussed the character and, you know, her performance and what she brought um, and that whole storyline, that is my history, you know? And so I, I, I eat it up. I, it's like my lunch and, and, and dinner, you know, because uh, it, it means a lot to me um, how they've set up the story and who she was back then. You don't often get this such a clear cut picture of who somebody was as a teenager, you know, as a character, you know, so it's, something, it's usually something I have to make up and here. It's all being written for me. So um, it's fun to, to have that to have uh, ja and Jasmine does this, such a great job with it. You know, um, I think we yeah. both decided on the character, um, the, the core pieces that she is a born leader, that she is type A, that she is, um, you know, maybe even a little OCD that she, you know, doesn't have the best intention. So these sorts of things um, we, we talked about from the get go and we both right. approach it the same way. Right. I was definitely wondering about the consistency, but um, as far as like charting the journey of who Thaisa would be going from her to you, basically, um, did you have those kind of conversations? Like, how do I become you, basically? 
Um, no, not so much that, uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, we all change. I mean, I'm definitely not the same person I was when I was a teenager. There are bits and pieces, but, you know, we didn't want to make that some sort of caricature or whatever, but things we did discuss, um, ways to say words. There was one time she called me up. She said, do we say either? Or do we say either? You know, that's, and I, and, and so we talked about that. Um, uh, the way that we, uh, positioned ourselves when we're in the dirt eating, because that's something that would happen unconsciously. So, you know, it probably happened the same way every, every time. So those sorts of things we ironed out together. I mean, we spent an afternoon, not an afternoon, but like a little lunch time in the park, uh, you know, practicing this, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. <laughs> so, yeah, so we got to, we, it was a, a real conglo um, uh, conglomeration. That's not the right word. It was a real, um, meeting of the minds when jazz and i got together to talk about taisa mm -hmm. well it's interesting because with taisa she's running for state senate and getting into this world of politics can be nasty and personal and it's interesting to have someone who has a number of skeletons in her closet who's trying to keep those skeletons hidden uh yeah. now taking on this very public facing role and really risking a lot probably not only for her, but for all the rest of the women that, that mm -hmm. made it. Um, what do you think is the foundation there of why she just presses ahead with those ambitions rather than try to be like, I'm just going to be anonymous and, you know. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I think Thaisa is driven by perfection. She, it's her defense against what happened to her in the wilderness and maybe what happens to her in her whole life is to make herself appear as as fine as possible a, a winner she is a winner above all you know uh she tells shauna that she accomplished everything she set out to do uh before the tragedy um she didn't let anything hold her back um i think that what she 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 had the perfect family she got the perfect wife she has the perfect house she has the perfect job where is el there else to go she needs to constantly look like she's winning. So um, given that in the first episode, she tells Shauna that she hasn't heard from the others in so long, you know, uh, I think she got a little comfortable uh, with the quiet and uh, decided that, you know, the next step in her life was world leader. <laughs> she just she just needed the perfect like all the pieces of the puzzle to be in place and i don't think that she gives a rat's ass who it hurts wow yeah no, you're probably not wrong about that um, <laughs> but when it comes to her family though it's interesting because on the surface it is this picture perfect family with her wife and you know wife and kid and just the whole sort of american dream but there's yeah a lot of turmoil at home. And yeah. I'm curious just with that dynamic, what it was like to create that with those actors, because there's so much that's being hidden. And, you know, she's starting to feel like her marriage is getting stale. Like there's so much going on with the kid too. Like yeah. how much were you able to talk with them about creating that family unit that maybe there was passion there at one mm -hmm. point, but now it's going through a lot of dysfunction, you know? Um, well, dealing with Rukia was a dream. I mean, I literally fell in love with the woman. She's uh, everything. I just saw her on a video thing about a week ago and I, I started crying. I was like, I miss, I miss her so much. It's crazy. And I really hope she gets to, you know, slap Thaisa really hard next season for all the shit that she's been put through. But um, uh, it, so, I, you know, what me and Rukia, we, it was easy. It was a sisterhood. It was a friendship. It was a love. So creating a, a, a picture perfect family with her was easy. Aiden was always game. Aiden Stocks. He came in completely game. He didn't know what the heck he was doing. Like he did. Like, he's a kid. He can't, he's not even old enough to watch the show. So he just knew he was playing this sort of creepy kid, but he was always game to be, to, to, to go there and do something a little weirder or whatever, which was uh, fun for us. Um, but if you look at the dynamic, you know, quite honestly, if you break it down, you can maybe you'll see that like Taisa doesn't even ask or notice that anything is wrong with her son until episode four. She says, I think there's something wrong with him. And it's like, really? Like, could you open your eyes? She doesn't even it doesn't seem like she actually cares 
about all these pieces of the puzzle, just that they're in the right place. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah, and so I think that that that, and then of course the you know the other lady, the sleeping, this uh, sleepwalker, mm -hmm. uh, you know, taking over a little bit. I think she cares less and less and less about the the pieces falling apart. She just wants that that golden ring. Right. Well, I do want to speak to that. We've mentioned it a few times now. The her entering this sort of fugue state, almost like this feral creature in a way climbing up yeah. a tree and it's it's kind of a startling image I will say um can you just take us back to filming a scene like that like what are the steps of getting into that kind of headspace that's hilarious I have no I, I mean like literally you're winging it you don't really right. know like what you know I'm under a tree I'm sort of hugged up against the tree I've worked on the movement I know how it's gonna go and then you sort of I when have you ever been in I've never been in a fugue state so it's really you know that's when the acting really comes <laughs> you know I mean all the character work that I can do there's not there's not much that I can do in the way of like uh, studying a fugue state or something like that but when I got the character I was told that there was a there were three levels to her and the, the, the bottom most being sort of this darkness that, that she doesn't even know is there. And so that's what I reach from in the in that whole like darkness, uh, sleepwalking state. I, I think it's, that's that's the darkness that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, do you enjoy being in that particular state? Like, do you want to keep doing that in season two? Like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> okay. I love it. Are you kidding? <laughs> First of all, that was cake mix. So it was gotcha. a lot of fun to eat, uh, piles and piles of cake mix. Right. But also, yeah, I'm a huge fan of whatever's going on with Thaisa. Like she, yeah. she's uh, got quite, quite a, a, a story ahead of her, especially if, you know, she starts letting the sleepwalker you know not sleep you know and then mm -hmm. it's going to be really fun to watch it's fun for me to play yeah for sure <laughs> well i'd also love to know about the dynamic with the other women of course you know melanie linsky juliette lewis christina ricci i've been able to talk to juliette and christina they both said that all four of you really bonded right away basically um i'm curious just from your perspective what that has been like and especially compared to other shows and projects that you've been a part of right um yeah that's a great question i have been in this business for decades and you wouldn't know it because i was always second fiddle on some other guy's show but um i've never felt i've always wanted to be a part of a team that's all I ever wanted. Acting is a team sport. And so coming in to these to these women who I've admired my whole life, who have, have done incredible roles that I watch over and over again, and then accepting me, this girl from Jersey, <laughs> it's, insane. it's surreal. I keep telling people, how do you enjoy the ride when it's so fucking surreal? And, but it's true. And they treated me like an eagle. I never once felt lesser than them. Um, and it, and and I I thank them from the bottom of my heart for that. And yeah, they became my friends. They became my sisters. Christina, she's a Jersey girl too, man. We we're like two peas in a pod. So um, I I could not have asked for a better group of ladies. It's a dream come true. Yeah. Um, well, by the end of this first season, she's pulled off a pretty stunning upset in this Senate race, and. Mm. We also get to see a glimpse of a rather interesting shrine that she's created in the <laughs> basement. So I guess the question is just like, what happens now moving forward? Now it feels like she's going to be in a new type of space. Like she's a state senator, but also now her wife has discovered some rather alarming things in the basement. Yeah. I mean, how do you envision what's next? Not saying like probing you for what is next, but right. what do you imagine no, I, what is next? I, I couldn't tell you what's next because uh, they don't <laughs> tell me anything. But um, I mean, I would imagine that she's gonna live a lot more of her life not sleepwalking. And I think that mm. she's allowing this darkness to take over because it's what's gonna get her more power more prestige the, the that perfect life that she that she you know so desperately needs to show the world you know i don't i can't imagine she she actually gives a fuck if 
if Simone comes back with the kid, you know, I think that she's now in a selfish space. I could be totally wrong. <laughs> I could be totally wrong. And she could go, you know, I mean, I, I honestly, I, I, the things that I wish for Thaisa are that she gets slugged really hard by uh, Simone and that um, she gets to hang out with her friends more, her, her newfound friends, her newfound old friends, you know? Mm. And we'll see what yeah. happens after that. I, I have no idea what's going to happen with the senator position. Like, I can't even imagine her being in the right headspace to even take on that role. But uh, thankfully, I don't got to write it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that actually gets me thinking, like, you know, you've talked about sort of not necessarily judging Thaisa, but really having like this active feelings about what she's doing and what she's going through. I'm actually curious if you were watching this show just as a fan, let's say you're not even a part of it. There's another right. person playing Thaisa. How do okay. you think you would be sort of engaging and reacting to this show? Oh yeah. I think it's the same way I do react to the show. I love the characters. I watch it like a fan, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I truly do love the characters. I think Thaisa, they're all despicable. There's not one likable person on the show quite honestly. And, and I love that. I love that they're so human and flawed and, and wrong, so very wrong, you know, and, and, tra and traumatized. And I love that. I love watching it. I think uh, these are women that you root for in spite of yourself. And that's what I really love about the show. Yeah, I think that's a, a great way, a great final note for us there. <laughs> um, and for those of you watching, subscribe for more interviews and go to goldderby.com to make your Emmy predictions. Thank you so much, Tani. Thank you so much.